Welcome back. Episode 137 of Chaotically Intolerant. It's Super Bowl week. This the, we're, we're out of the dark week. Yes. I would say. Um, and this was, you, you were telling me about the dark week the last time they had one week. <laughs> yeah. Right? So the, okay, we were going through like a little history lesson. So <laughs> the, uh, the last time they actually officially did not have a dark week was uh, John Lynch, who's now 49er GM, was part of the Bucks in 2002, that 2002 season. Um, they had tried to put the dark week in in 2001, but as everyone I'm sure knows, we had 9-11. So everything, so what happened was week two of that season, it was going to be week two, got pushed back to week 17. They just moved everything, they just kept everything else on schedule. They moved the playoffs back a week, they got rid of the dark week. Got us talking, we were talking about how, of course, the first game after 9-11 that year, which was would have been week three, but was week two, Bledsoe gets hurt. The mm-hmm. Jets injure him. Paul Lewis hits Bledsoe. Football's never the same. But I'm always fascinated. because the, se- actually... the second worst thing to happen second... in New York. Yeah, that's right. I already used that joke before, but yeah, I have yeah, to use it, use it on the air. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I, I was in uh, high school, and I had tickets to go visit my cousin in St. Louis. And we were going to see the Rams. It was their home opener. And remember that year, the Rams went to the Super Bowl. They were the greatest show on turf. Warner was the MVP. Michael Vick had just gotten drafted by Atlanta. They were playing Atlanta. That but was... I don't know if he would have played because he wasn't starting at that point in the season. If that was, was that long ago? It was that long ago. It was 01. He was the first pick in the draft. And I always think about the Patriots then because they lost their opening game that year and the Carolina Panthers won their opening game. They were scheduled to face each other in week two. The Panthers might have been favored in that game. The Panthers ended up losing their last 15 games. And then uh, Bledsoe gets hurt. They end up playing week 17 of that season in front of like an empty stadium, basically. The Patriots kick the crap out of the Panthers. Uh, Carolina goes to 1-15. and 15. They bring in John Fox. They draft Julius Peppers. They're in the Super Bowl against them a couple years later. But I always wonder, that week they got moved back. People don't ever think about the, the whole... They had Ramifications. This segment, yeah, they had that segment. <clears throat> Dave Demoshek had that. The NFL, right? The what if, what if, whatever. That... What if, like, New England had lost that game? Would, you know, they fall to 0-2, they lose to Carolina. Would Belichick have been like, all right, I'm just benching Bledsoe with Brady? Or would he have been like, I'm going to ride this out? Then Bledsoe never gets hurt. Maybe Brady comes in, but it's too late. Who knows? That one game, you know, that one week, and then one thing that happens, and the whole whole landscape of football changed. Well, the if thing also, Topps did a, they ran a campaign for if Brady went to baseball. They did that this year right. if he got drafted by the Expos, the Expo, or if he went to the Expos because he was drafted. And they did the, like, everyone in Montreal sitting in a bar with Brady stuff all over, but right, it's all right. Expos colored. Uh-huh. And they're like 759 <laughs> home, or however many touchdowns he had, right, right. but in home runs. And they did, like, uh, seven World Series. And then Eli was, he played for the San Francisco Giants, which... Didn't make sense to me because I was like, well, they're both in the National League at the time. Right. That doesn't make, because Eli obviously beat Brady in two Super Bowls. Uh-huh. So if anything, he would have had to go play for like another New York team. Like the he would have had to play for the Yankees. Or an American League team. Yeah, or just an American League team. But obviously the Giants, I think it would fit better if he played for the Yankees, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Brady grew up a San Francisco Giants fan because mm-hmm. he's from the Bay Area. He was an 18th round pick. Now, how many 18th round? Pick? Baseball's weird though. You, you, Mike Piazza was the yeah, yeah. second, 63rd round. He's yeah. in the Hall of Fame. You know, and of course Brady was a seven, uh, six round pick in football. Yeah, he was. He had, he won more Super Bowls than the round he was drafted in. Yeah, I'm six looking up. Round. Yeah, Mookie Betts was a fifth rounder. Yeah, yeah the, I mean the draft just doesn't matter. It does. I mean, there's a lot of you know, there's probably more busts at number one overall. than they they try to every year they try to make the baseball draft a thing. I get notifications yeah. all the time. They're yeah. like, "We're getting ready for the draft." I'm like, "All right, whatever, buddy." Like, right. I don't care. Like, I'll see who the Red Sox draft, and I'm like, sure. "Okay, cool." Like, this guy might work out. This right. guy might not. Like, drafted eleven pitchers, fourteen outfielders, yeah, twelve infield. You're like, and right. three of them are gonna work out. <laughs> Most of, yeah, I mean, yeah. odds yeah. are. Um, we were always... speak- we were also talking about the 2001 draft. Briefly, very we were, we were, yeah. LT came out of that draft, right? So the Chargers had the number one pick originally, based on the fact that they were one in fifteen in two thousand. But they traded that pick with Atlanta, mm-hmm. and Atlanta, I think, sent 
I know Tim Dwight was in the trade. He was part of that because he was with Atlanta when they were in the Super Bowl in 98. So they, the Falcons move up. They take Vic. The Chargers take Tomlinson at five. And then they take Breeze at what? That would have been 32 because it was the first pick of the second round. It was in that weird three-year period when the league had 31 teams. So teams had teams had yeah. week one buys and they had week 17 buys. Um, That's weird. It, it, it was really weird. weird. It was weird. So Reggie then, Wayne also, 30th pick. Reggie Wayne, from the yeah, Colts. That's right. And they already had a pretty good receiver in Harrison. They said, why not? Let's get let's get Peyton another weapon. Yeah. Um, but it's just so crazy to think. Because everyone thinks about the tuck rule. You know what I mean? Everyone mm-hmm. thinks about the tuck rule. And they think about when Brady came in because Bledsoe got hurt. But if that game before gets played, I mean, what are the odds the scenario plays out exactly the same way? Yeah. Bledsoe makes that exact run and gets hit. And I'm telling you, like, those two teams – the first week of the season, we're going in completely opposite directions. And then, you know, whatever. Or not because of 9-11, but the break happened. The Panthers then, are, the Panthers were coming to that game 1-0. and They ended up 1-0. The Patriots came into that game 0-1. and They went 11-5 and and won the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I just think it's it was so fitting, because I remember this, it was even though it was 20 years ago, Carolina and New England played in the Super Bowl two years later. Yes, Carolina had an incredible turnaround. Mm-hmm. John Fox, like I said, they drafted all these guys. At defense. Steve Smith came in 2001, Steve, too. Steve Smith. So Steve Smith, speaking of 2001 early in the season, his first play in the NFL, he ran the opening kickoff of the season back for a touchdown against Minnesota. That was their only win that year. That was that first win when they were 1-0. <laughs> Smith ran the opening kickoff back. I mean, they had Chris Wanky at quarterback for most of the Chris Wanky, you remember back that far, that played at FSU. He was like a 30-year-old rookie. He played like eight years in college. It was, it was you know, a funny story. So that was That's like the 2020 Jacksonville Jaguars, too. They, they beat, they beat the Colts. Against the Colts. I do, I do remember. Phillip Rivers. That was the last year that we had 16 games on the yep. schedule. They won their opening game. And the Colts were good that year, right? We made the playoffs. playoffs. We almost beat Buffalo in the first round that year. Yeah, and then won like 11 games. Yeah, we won 11 games. And the the Jaguars put out a graphic saying, like, 1-0, and we're not done type of thing. Yeah. And it was like, oh, my God, of course. Like, (laughs) it's the Jaguars, right? I mean, that's what they do. That was even before Urban Meyer. I'm trying to remember who the head coach was in 2020 for the Jaguars. Oh, Oh, that's a really – let me try and rack my brain for that. I'm going to quiz you on it. Oh, okay. It wasn't Coughlin, was it? No. Coughlin was gone after no. a while. Because I know he was their GM for a long time, too. After he left New York, he was he went to Jacksonville for a while. Um, it was... Yeah, this, and it's shocking is this coach was the coach who took them to the AFC Championship game in 2017. Yeah. And made it through the entire 2020 season despite losing those 15 games. As did George Seifert back in 2001, I guess, because he had a Super Bowl win. All right. You mean to just tell you? Yeah, tell me. It, uh, Doug Marone. Doug Marone. Former Bills coach. What a name. And, and yeah, coaches. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Jaguars came within a few minutes of the Super Bowl. Under they Marone. came within a bad call of a Super Bowl, of that fumble. Oh, Miles the Miles Jack. Jack the Miles Jack gets called down, down which, right. I mean, we can... The, the the conspiracy theorists have been coming out this week. My God, the, like, well, yeah, we can we can talk a talking lot. about Taylor Swift and all that stuff. Yeah, just even yeah with with the Ravens, they're saying this game was clearly scripted. Blah blah. I was like, okay, Lamar threw it into triple coverage in the end zone. Like, there was did, did he force that? What what about like Lamar overthrowing OBJ like three times? Yeah, down the side yeah, or fumbling at the one yard line. Yeah. after a taunting. I mean, and on Raven. and especially if. The NFL was scripting it. They wouldn't want the 49ers in it. They would want the Detroit Lions. That's yeah. that's still my point. Like, they don't want the 49ers who have been there every time, who their right. fans are. I mean, their fans are pretty reliable, I would say. Yeah. But the Detroit Lions, they would buy every single shirt. They would. I can't imagine the amount of Lions fans that would mortgage their house. Yeah, to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, think about all the money that they would spend just on NFC championship gear. Because that's never been, that's never happened for them. Yeah. Well, we, so, remember we were saying we both had friends that were looking yeah. at tickets at halftime. Yeah. Of that game. And I was yelling, I was yelling, I was, I was yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you're you, getting caught know. up in it too, believe me. But um, <laughs> yes, yes, that would have been uh, in a perfect world. There'd be an underdog, a team to really root for. Yeah. It doesn't feel like there's a team to root for here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, everyone's sick of the Chiefs, but like 
49ers are just the Chiefs, but without the Super Bowl wins. They're like the team that's yeah. been there a couple times. They've been to a bunch of NFC Championship games. I guess that, but they have five Super Bowl. I wins. think I think if you really look more into the story, they have you know they haven't won it in twenty nine or twenty nine years. Twenty nine years. Yeah. 29 years. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, who was stuck on a just abysmal Panthers team yeah. for years and everyone thought his career was going to go down the drain. Right. Like now he has a shot to actually win a Super Bowl title. Obviously the Shanahan McCaffrey thing, which is going to get, oh, it's going to be talked about all game. And Tony Romo is going to just have somebody's penis down his throat. Po- <laughs> most likely Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Um, but I think the 49ers are a little more likable than people are giving them credit. Maybe yeah. it's just, maybe wow. it's just me being sick of the chiefs. So I'm trying to find something. And they, and they have a, a second year quarterback and they and even though they were in it four years ago, this is a new quarterback yeah. matchup. Right? And Brock I think Brock is pretty likable. I mean he's not he he's never he doesn't come out and say anything. Like I don't unless he said lives with his a roommate. Lives with a roommate offensive lineman. Because he makes he makes no money. Yeah. With no a hundred with eight hundred thousand right. dollars a year. Plus their bonus if for getting the super yeah. Season. Cam Cam Newton came out and said something about him being a game manager, and I don't. I, maybe I saw a fake response. Maybe I just got got. But I did say him or see him say like, "Well, there's like fifty something quarterbacks in the NFL, and I, you're not one of them." Yeah, I'm not sure if he actually said that. It doesn't seem like a Brock Purdy thing to say, especially right before the Super Bowl. Um, well, you know, go back and look at Tom Brady's early career stats yeah he, was, he wasn't a game manager and that, he was carried by his defense well and his run game and, he, and even when he wasn't i mean just because a quarterback doesn't put up big numbers sometimes he doesn't have to sometimes the best thing he can do is be the game manager yeah you know what i mean they say oh alex smith he's just a game now it's easier to throw him under the butt because this is the alex smith bowl right this yeah. is the two teams that got really well close Al- alex smith even Alex's said he goes as the like president of game manager quarterbacks like brock is well, not say the president of these two teams oh no no he he's said the... president of game manager quarterbacks right, right, he's, right. he said this he goes brock Purdy is not a game manager no which i i mean I, I just don't understand how somebody can say he's a game manager and he's making these fantastic reads fantastic decisions it's that's not game manager a game manager is just yeah i'm gonna hand the ball off here i'm gonna make some easy little out throws i'm yeah. gonna Throw a couple screens, you know, I'll take one deep shot because it's, you know, it might be there, it might not. Right. But that's not Brock Purdy. And and he's and he was running the ball. He was running the ball a lot in the NFC yeah. title game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking because I have Brady stats just for reference of game manager. If you look at 2001, 2002, 2001, the Patriots won the Super Bowl. 2002, they missed the postseason entirely. Brady had... Now, granted, he started two fewer games in 01 because he came in week three, but he had 10 fewer touchdown passes. He had 900 fewer yards. You know, the interceptions were close. Mm -hmm. Um, His completion percentage in 01 was a little higher, but his um, yards per game much lower, rating about the same. But point being, he was slinging it that second year. He led the league in 02. This is crazy to say. He led the league with 28 touchdown passes. 28? 28 touchdown passes he led. Either led the AFC or led the league. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and that, t- that Patriot team, they had to throw more because they were getting run on. They were giving yeah. up a lot of points. And so the point is, is like winning games in the NFL, it, that is the quarterback's job. Yeah. The numbers are sexy. The awards are sexy. Mahomes has been kind of a game manager at times this year, part yeah. because his receivers have stunk mm-hmm. in part because the defense has been really good. He just hasn't had to, yeah. but believe me, and both of these quarterbacks, really, they have, they've had the clutch gene this year. I think I think Mahomes is obviously aided by the fact that he didn't have a defense earlier in his career, right? And, and he still got it done. Yeah, like he st- he gets you know he plays the Patriots uh, in in eighteen, then they lose, and then he won a Super Bowl with. I mean, that's not the defense they have now. Like they, right. Mahomes. I know. I remember Mahomes' defense in eighteen. That was a horrible, right. horrendous defense. They they couldn't stop anyone. And then obviously there was the offsides on on the pick play, forward, yeah, yeah, which I don't think any Chiefs fan, no matter how many Super Bowls they win, I don't think any Chiefs fan will like go to sleep at night and not think about the D Ford offsides. Sure, because then they obviously another Super Bowl is another Super Bowl, and I'm pretty confident they would have beat the Rams now regular. Season. But then the Rams like couldn't score anything in right. the Super Bowl, and and I feel like I mean, I think their offense probably at that moment in the season was a lot more potent than what the Rams could have done. 
Talk about Super Bowls that the league didn't want. They got a 13 to 3 Super Bowl. They could have had a rematch of a 54 yeah. to 51 game. Explain I, explain that. Like see it like I yeah, I would I like see. someone to explain that. I mean it's just the, you know, it's a conspiracy theory. You hit you know, you throw 100 darts, you hit one of them. It's like, "Oh, it's definitely right. Do it. Yeah. It's definitely right." It was, you know, my uh, lucky number. It was my high school jersey. I mean, he could yeah. make something up. Yeah. So, Roger Goodell as much as people give him shit. He knows what he's doing when it comes to building the brand, when it comes to, like, Thursday Night Football. Like, Thursday Night Football is just normal. And, like, people love Thursday Night Football now. And for a I'm long time. Them, but I get Oh, well, you're not one of them. I get your point, yeah. A lot of people love Thursday Night Football just because it's Thursday Night Football. It's awesome. Like, we have more football. Sure. And he does all these other teams. things. Uh, yeah. He's doing the Nickelodeon thing. We're going to move to 18 games probably in, like, two, three years. Yeah. Probably to, well, what's, what's the next bargaining chip for them? <laughs> oh, I know. I was gonna say the just to get to eighteen, not till twenty thirty. Yeah, I can't remember when the next bargaining chip is, but uh, I mean, Roger Goodell knows what he's doing, and if he wanted to make the absolute most money out of this, he would have the Detroit Lions in the Super Bowl right now. Like yeah. this is the moment. This would be their moment, and well, we're here. Maybe they're just a year away. You know, if, we're, if the Lions are in it next year at this time against uh, the Browns, God forbid, the oh, Bills or something like. You know, I can't. It I, might be a year late, but it's still gonna make. They're they're gonna have to hope like maybe Mahomes like for some you know maybe Mahomes gets hurt in like the wild card game or something and they lose. Yeah, and then you know you get like a wide open field. Like I think what was it twenty? I mean it was twenty nineteen. That was when the Patriots lost. It was like oh right. What, right, what do we was... what do we have here? Like well, we have I... so many options now. Sure, from the AFC because it was always just Brady. But like I think the year Ben went, that was a big year because like well, Brady, Brady was hurt. And Brady only, was yeah, hurt. I was gonna say that the Steelers just kind of did what they do, which is always come in at the second level when the Patriots are gone. Um, <laughs> my, by the way, my whole thing in Thursday Night Football, people don't know the backstory, but it, a lot of that was um, because Time Warner, if you know Time Warner Cable, didn't want to buy the NFL package, and so the NFL said, "Well, we're gonna force your hand. We're gonna put a game on NFL Network every single week, Thursday Night Football." <laughs> Then your customers are really going to be pissed that you don't have an NFL network. And guess who won that power struggle? Just take a wild guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and here we are. That was, I want to say it was 2011 or 2012 where that started. And it was like, oh my God, we're in week two and we have a Thursday night game. Um, and we're, and the season's going to have an opening Friday night game next year. Yeah, yeah I, I hate in that. Brazil? Are you kidding? I hate I mean, that. Is it, wait, is that the first game of the year? It's going to be the, their first game. Yeah. So that, that 17th game was just, so let's just get a bunch of teams now to play overseas. And you're right. It, it's, it's, you know, you have the 18th games so that more, that both conferences can have team. I mean, it's just, you know. I absolutely cannot stand the, cannot the stand international the international. Games. I just, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I understand. They should start with flag football. That's really what they should do. You have to start with flag football. You have to start, I mean, the Olympics, like that's, right. that's how you grow the game. And then you grow into leagues like uh, the XFL and the USFL just announced the merger to the UFL oh. like a few weeks ago. So they're like, right. I think they're there. That is like our first real minor league football. I think okay. like that's going to be the first real iteration where they're probably going to become a farm team for the NFL, a direct farm team, not just like, a, oh, these guys are playing football. We'll sign them out of, you know, when they when the season is over. Yeah. I think it's going to be a direct farm team. And then the NCAA, there's a lot of shit going on right now. I don't know if you've seen that. No. The NCAA is going after Tennessee right now for recruiting violations in regards to the NIL. Except apparently every lawyer I've heard talk about this. They're saying that the NCAA is in violation of like every rule in the book. Right. This is I'm, I'm giving you a very obviously a very surface level understanding of sure. what this is. That's all I can handle. But this is basically the first step in football and probably basketball breaking away from the NCAA. The SEC and the Big Ten are most likely going to turn into their own league. And then I want to say it was like Vermont or some small basketball school up, up in the uh, New England area. They have officially recognized their basketball players as employees of the school. Oh, okay. So that's going to, that's like a landmark decision. And I think, I think the government's going to have to review it and look at it and make sure everything's good. But that's a landmark decision when it comes to NIL, because then that's going to 
change the whole game. That means we're probably, it's just going to be another minor league. Like we're going to have single A, double A, and then the NFL. That's what's coming. That's what it sounds like. So, I mean, it's better than what the NCAA is because the NCAA sucks. Yeah. I hate most them. Most players would agree with you. The, the only reason they're good is because of they, they give other sports the ability to shine because I think if the NCAA fully disappears, you're not going to have – I mean, college baseball will probably still be there, but you're not going to have other sports like women's field hockey won't survive. Right. Most tennis, I can't imagine like college tennis will survive. I can't imagine college golf will survive unless like the golf channel, which is NBC, they keep that going and that's going to be small. But swimming, I can't imagine that'll survive unless for the Olympics and then USA. So it's just looking like more and more outside sources are going to have to come in unless the NCAA finds a way to stay intact for these other sports right because football i mean it was it was becoming time the college football playoff is a clusterfuck of what they the, that's not the right way to do it i just i can't stand the i can't stand a subjective committee saying you were right and you know you're you deserve to get in but you right, don't right, right you do and you don't i mean th- it shouldn't matter like liberty went 12 and 0 and they won their conference right you go 12 and 0 you win your conference that's like the NFL. You win the NFC South, you can go on a run in the playoffs, like the Bucks did. They won a playoff game. Sure. So sure. I mean, I mean, at least in college basketball, you have the conference tournaments that you can. So you can you can get your bid. Yeah. And get some of these teams in. Yeah. 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 Let's get off college football. Anyways, let's talk Super Bowl. Yes. Um, Chiefs and 49ers rematch. Uh, a couple. I guess the NFL is reusing the script. We have. Chiefs and 49ers rematch. It's an election year. Um, hopefully not another pandemic. Hopefully, well, though, I mean, the World Health Organization is always saying something, but they said there's another strain of COVID that they think is a variant of interest. Hopefully we don't lose any beloved American figure like we did with Kobe Bryant before the Super Bowl. Um, but there maybe maybe that writer's strike just affected the, yeah. affected the NFL writers. I mean, this script, just reusing it a little bit. What do we want to cover first? Do we want to do the stupid props now that, so then we can talk about other stuff later, or we can do the stupid props at the end of the, at the end of the episode. What do you think? Um, stupid props at the end. Okay. Um, so I'm looking, I'm going to, I have a little betting sheet that I wrote down here. Um, so the first team to score, if anyone is looking for the first team to score, the first team to score won 11 of the last 15 Super Bowls. That's the first one. Okay. So pretty good pretty good odds. If they score first, they'll also win. Um, the – hold on. Oh, sorry. That was – yeah, 11 of the last 15. The team that scored first is 65%. The 37 and 20 of all time. Okay. Um, first score was a touchdown 27 times. The team also won, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just wrote down a bunch of different. Well, how many stuff. times did they win when the first score was a touchdown? Out of those twenty-seven, Wait, like eighteen yeah. times. Oh, okay. Um, when the first score was a field goal, also twenty-seven times, so it's fifty-fifty. Uh, the team won fifty-nine point three percent. They were sixteen and eleven. And then the first score was a safety, three Giants, times. Giants, that's Patriots. I know that. Broncos, right? Seahawks. Oh, that's what I was the first, first play the game. Yeah, of course. Um, the team won one hundred percent of the time all three all three three, three and oh if you get a safety the seahawks and i wonder what the oh uh maybe the um the bills and the giants i know there was a safety in that game. we had a little like stretch there in where it was like three out of four or three straight four straight super bowls or something where we had a safety because you had the the seattle one and then the ravens took an intentional safety at the yeah. end against the niners and then brady uh had the intentional grounding the year before that and then uh, a few years before in Pittsburgh, Arizona, I remember there was a mm-hmm. holding in the end zone late in the game. Um, but you're right. It, safety's in the Super Bowl pretty uncommon. Yeah. I'm trying to find all three of them. I think it was. I, I, I'll look. But I think it was uh, Giants-Bills because I know there was a safety in that game. I know. And uh, let me see if my uh, nerdiness. No, the safety was later. It was uh, Bruce Smith. Bruce he picked it up uh, and he tackled Jeff Hosteller, gave the Bills a 12-3 lead. All right, so here's another one. 49ers are 9 and 2 when they lead at the end of the first quarter and they're okay. 4 and 2 when they don't. The Chiefs are 9 and 0 when they lead at the end of the first quarter and if they're down, they're 1 and 5. 
the Chiefs are this year. You mean this year? Yeah. Okay, and then the other games are tied, presumably, right? Because you said trail that, led. Yeah, I, yeah, I would assume they were they tied. Twenty. So I did not write down five, if they were tied. Games when. Um, okay. Uh, interesting, but yet the Chiefs. I mean, in Mahomes, in both of his Super Bowl wins, he's been down ten points. Yeah. He's had. Oh my God! I mean, he had three. You know what's crazy about the 2019 Chiefs? They were Mahomes was down ten or more in all three games, and they won them all by ten or more. Actually, they won them all by eleven or more. That's great. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? They so that means they had at least a 21 point swing in all three. And of course, the Houston game they outscored it 51 to seven after they were down 24 nothing. So some good stats there. Good few. I got. I got a lot more written down. Spit them out. I'm going to throw a few out there too. Let's see. Um, I just have a lot of quarters, honestly. Okay. <laughs> oh, the only two teams leading by more than seven points at halftime that have ever lost a Super Bowl. No, no let me guess this. How many? What, how many did you say? There are only two teams leading by more than seven well, points the, at halftime. Last year, the Eagles were up ten. And yep. they, well, no, New England and Seattle were tied. So I was thinking. Oh well, Atlanta, of course. Yeah, those two. Well, because Brady's been in so many. When yeah. Come back. Yeah. Um, no team has ever come back to win the game when they're held scoreless in the first half. How often does that happen? The Rams were down three nothing at halftime. Patriots yeah. weren't. They, I think they kicked a late field goal to go into the half. Yeah, it was twenty one three at halftime in that game. Uh, well, the Rams definitely were one because that was a that was a three nothing game at halftime. That horrible. Yeah, that was a gross, horrendous. That was so gross. Well, Denver game. Denver was getting shut out obviously until late in that Seattle. Yeah, until like the, early in the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. Um, teams leading by three points or less at the half have lost five of ten times. Okay, so um, five of the last ten, and teams leading by four have lost seven out of fifteen. So again, coin flip. Okay. Um, both teams also have winning records when they are leading or not leading at halftime. 49ers are nine and two when they lead They're four and three when they're not leading. So I think that includes tied, right. tied or losing chiefs are eight and two when they're leading and they're six and three when they are tied or losing. <laughs> and that's what the scary, that's a scary yeah. proposition. Um, uh, oh, they're probably oh. they probably have a winning record when they're down or ten. Yeah. So, okay. Um. All right. Uh. Oh, this is my other. I think I wrote down a bunch of stupid props. What What are some of your numbers? Oh, I got. It. All right. I'll, I'll just spit them, a bunch of these out. So this is the eighth Super Bowl rematch, and when I say rematch, I mean so this is the fifty eighth Super Bowl, and it's the eighth time that two teams have faced off either two or three times in one case, which mm -hmm. is Pittsburgh, Dallas. And I think the trend is that more often than not, the team that wins the first will win the second. I want to read them off. Pittsburgh, Dallas. Pittsburgh beat Dallas uh, twice mm -hmm. in the 70s. Super Bowls 10 and 13. Obviously, Dallas got their revenge in 95. That's the only matchup to occur three times. Um, Miami, Washington split. They played 10 years apart. San Francisco beat Cincinnati both times, seven years apart in the 80s. Uh, we know the only time in history that teams have played in the Super Bowl back-to-back -back years, Buffalo-Dallas. Bengals was uh, Boomer, right? Boomer and Sison. Anderson was the first one. Boomer was the second one. Was, were both of those a Koye, or um, not a Koye, Icky? Uh, I don't know if both of them. One of them definitely was, if not both. That's... Um, Obviously, Dallas hammered Buffalo two years in a row. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the Bills. I mean, people were fatigued to the Bills, even though they didn't win because they got there four years in a row. Yeah. Um, Patriots, Giants. Giants won both of those four years apart. Um, Patriots and Eagles, those split. They played 13 years apart. Uh, and the Patriots beat the Rams both times. They faced off uh, 17 years apart. So Kansas City, San Francisco, the eighth time. Um, teams of math. I did the math. It's very simple math. 16 times 16. There's 256 possible Super Bowl matchups based on the current AFC and NFC. Yeah. And we've had, so if we've had eight rematches plus two of those teams have played three times, 49 of those. If we played football for the next thousand years, I don't think we'd cover 207. How many um, rematches of Patriots have they? They've had three. They've had three. three. Giants, Eagles, yeah. Rams. And they all... Like, they beat the Rams twice, split with the Eagles, lost to the Giants twice. That's just so weird to me that all of those were within, like, a 20-year period. All of them were, were Brady. 
because I know because I obviously the the Giants are the most notable ones, right, right? But it's so odd to me that they played the Eagles twice in a like it, that, those were Brady's two careers because everyone yeah. says Brady could have three Hall of Fame careers. Two of them he plays them at the same or in the different careers. Right. They saw a different, basically a complete, almost a completely different player yeah. in Tom Brady, and they still lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. They still, except for the Eagles, obviously the Eagles beat them. Well, I mean, but in the Eagles one that he lost, he he was over 500 yards. He was a, yeah, that wasn't his fault. It was his, a flawless game yeah, the, until the strip set. Or the, or the drop. The, yeah, it was a flawless game as a quarterback. Jalen Hurts actually did that in the Pro Bowl this year. They they tried to run that a variation of that play to him, and it went right off his hands. Oh, it looked exactly like the Brady like drop, and he like oh. except he fall to the ground laughing. I'm sure Brady was like, "Fuck, yeah, I can't believe I dropped it." Yeah, that's uh, um, so uh, yeah, interesting. There have been three Super Bowl scores that have repeated themselves twice. There's obviously like. I don't think there's ever been a scoregami or like a Super Bowl score that was a true like that's only ever happened that one time. Mm-hmm. It's like even forty one thirty three, we had a game a few years ago, the Niners and Lions, interestingly, and yeah. there was one in like the seventies. <laughs> so the only Super Bowl, so if you're looking for like a what's a common score we might see in the Super Bowl, the only ones that have happened twice, twenty seven ten, uh twenty seven C one seventeen. So all pretty yeah, common scores. Because I love it. Like when you look at like the expert picks, they're always like pretty common scores, right? Yeah. No one has ever like it's gonna be like thirty-two to twenty-two. You know, you get the squares and you get the two. Like, what's that? That's never gonna happen. So, somebody somebody offered me to do Super Bowl squares this oh, year. Goodness. I was like, honestly, because they didn't have any numbers written down on them. So it was just random. Like, yeah, random I just yeah. That's and I was did. like, I I literally told him as I gave him the money. I was like, this is just my. I know I'm not gonna win, but somebody's gonna win. That's the good news. I remember has to win. if the Patriots would have won, if they would have scored a touchdown. In the Patriots Eagles Super Bowl a few years ago, I would have won. I would have guessed it perfectly. Well, I was one score off. Like I would have guessed the because we do it. We also do a game where you know you just pick the winner and the exact score. Mm-hmm. I was one touchdown off from winning the whole thing. Yeah, I was so pissed. I was because like Brett, they threw they threw like a, a deep touchdown or something like that. Or a, no, they had a hail mary at the end of the game. Right. And I was like, motherfucker, you can't hold on to that. I would have won like 200 bucks. I was what in was high the, school. So it would have been what the final score? 41-33. Yeah. I think maybe I had like 42-41 and I, I, they would have needed to go for two or miss it. And maybe I had the Patriots scoring 33 and the Eagles not winning. I can't remember, but I remember it was like a touchdown off. It was, it was there. Yeah. I was so close. And like as a high schooler, it's so much money. Could have won. I changed my score pick last year, but I had written down in like November somewhere that the Chiefs were going to be the Eagles 38 35. And then when I went to pick the game, I said 31 27. But I put a dollar on 38 35. How much did you win on that? 80 bucks. That's I did a few others. So, you know, I came out at like 70 <laughs> bucks, right? But the only <laughs> other Super Bowl score I got perfectly, and I have it, I do have it documented way back in the Draft America archives, was the Seattle Super Bowl, New England Seattle, 28 24. And I just somehow I just knew they that that they weren't going to score that touchdown. I don't know how I knew. It just felt like Brady's not going to lose another Super Bowl in Arizona. This yeah. I just didn't know how, but Pete Carroll called the pass. Pretty salty about that. I would be too. I think he's very. He's still very upset because you hear him talk about it, and he's like he's still angry at Pete Carroll. Right. They, they said like when he was in the huddle, everyone looked around and was like, "What? Yeah. What do you? Why?" And they. I think if that was me, I would have been, I mean, I'm not in the NFL. Who throws a pass over the middle of the I'm not in the NFL, like but if it was me, pass. I would have been like, no, we're going to run the ball. <laughs> like, I don't, right. I don't give a shit. But even if you pat, I, if you had like play action, you roll out, yeah. you throw a fade, I mean, something that's just not going to get intercepted. Mm-hmm. Like a safer. Yeah. Plus something like, higher in the air. Right. But if you look at the replay, I mean, it looked like it was there. Malcolm yeah. Butler, I mean, that was a heck of a play. Didn't, wasn't he almost, play he was almost cut before that Super Bowl, right? I think Belichick, like for disciplinary no, reasons. No, that was the Eagles Super Bowl. He benched him. Oh, it was. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but Butler was, you know, I don't know if he was like a practice squad guy or a late round draft or undrafted. I can't remember. But he, I mean, obviously he'll never have to buy a beer in New England again. That's true. It's... Quick Icky Woods stat. He only played four years. Oh, well, then there's your answer. 98 to 9 or 88? 1988 to 91. Oh, so his rookie year was that second. 
Super Bowl? It was. John Candy in the stand, right? Like John oh, McCann yeah. Looks up, hey, there's John Uncle Buck. <laughs> uh, there's been five quarterbacks to start for the 49ers. Can in the Super Bowl, I can name them, yeah, without even looking at my list. Well, does that include Brock Purdy? That includes Brock Purdy. Yeah, Brock Purdy. You got Jimmy Garoppolo. You got Colin Kaepernick. Some dude named Montana and some other guy named Young, I guess. Right? Um, yeah. So, uh, Montana won. Of course, Montana's won 80% of them, though. Right? Because he won four out of the five. Young won his, yeah. his one. And, um, well, the, the, uh, the high, you know what the highest scoring Super Bowl is combined with the two teams? Involved it's in 70. I know it's like what 75. 75. Was it? It wasn't the 12, the 20 or the 2011. No, 2012. No, no. No, that was uh, 65 points. It was pretty high. Was it? Oh, I think I know this. It was a Buffalo. No, it was so. I'll tell you, it was the um, it was the Niners' last Super Bowl win against the Chargers. Fittingly, oh, 49ers 95, 49 right? points. You won 90. 94 season. 49 26 over the Chargers. And uh, Steve Young had, what, six touchdowns in that game? Was that Dan Fouts? And they got violently ill after the game in the limo because he was so dehydrated. I remember reading the whole story on that. Uh, no, it wasn't Dan Fouts. It was uh, Stan Humphrey. So I think pa- I think passed away. There, There's a whole curse of the 94 Chargers. There's like a bunch of, um, oh no, Stan Humphrey didn't pass away, but there were a bunch of guys from the 94 Chargers team, including Young C. Jr. Stay out who passed away there there's like a curse of that 94 chargers team. i think the chargers are just cursed they're general. cursed in general but after the bills lost by the way another fun stat after the bills lost four straight super bowls so the last one was the 93 season between 94 and 2006 when the colts won mm-hmm. uh 13 super bowls all of them had a different losing team okay 13 yeah they had repeat Bowl winners losers but... right every every year was a a new Super Bowl losers. Yeah. The Chargers, the Steelers, the Pats, the Packers, the Falcons, the Titans, the Giants, the Rams, the Raiders, the Panthers, the Eagles, the Seahawks, and of course, as you know, the Bears. Yeah. And then the Pats finally again with they, they lost Great. the Giants. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, I hate the one all day. I love, I love this stuff. But we should probably talk about the game. Who's the longest <laughs> tenured player in the Super Bowl or not? Oh, long right uh, now. Or in this year's Super Bowl. You mean the play the the player active player who's been in the league the longest? Yeah. On the two teams? Mm-hmm. Oh God! It's actually this one surprised me. I didn't think he was. Well, I was he'd hoping Robbie this. Gold would be still the kicker because then he could go all the way back to to the twenty five before Goodell yeah. was commissioner. Um, oh God! Uh, let me think. Is it? Uh, I feel like it's someone on the Chiefs. I don't know why. No, wait. Give me the team. Just give me the team. Forty nine ers. It's on the Forty Nine ers. God, I mean, it's not the kicker or the punter, right? No, because that's always the it's not the safest no. bet. So um, shockingly, no, it's not. It's not. It's not going to be a running back. So it can't be. No, it obviously can't be Kittle. Um, probably a defense. Is it like Dre Greenlaw or something? No, not defense. It's on offense. Yeah. Oh, Trent Williams. Yep. Yeah. I didn't think that. Twenty. What? Because he was when Richard Sherman punched Fort- him in the face after that playoff game in 2012. Oh. So he's at least been in the league over he's, a decade. I geez, forgot. So he was in that. Jesus. Yeah, yeah that was years. that um, Seahawks uh, Redskins game in 2012, and, and he just let. And Richard Sherman said, "What are you gonna do?" He said, "I'm gonna punch you in your face." He said, "All right," and, and he did it on camera. I'm sure he's not the first guy who's wanted to hit Richard Sherman, but that's true. Speaking of 49ers Chiefs, last time they were in the Super Bowl, Richard Sherman got burned by Sammy Watkins. Down <laughs> Sammy the side Watkins. Like Sammy Watkins. Yeah. Oh set up no! Didn't touchdown. he get fat? I think he got fat. Oh, I'm sure a lot of get fat. You know no, he, but he got fat, fat when he was playing. Oh, maybe no. I'm thinking of. Who was the receiver for wrong sport? No. <laughs> who was the receiver for the Bills? He was like a first round pick, and all of a sudden he got fat, and then he wanted to be a tight end. It was oh, pretty recent. Well, Sammy Watkins was drafted by the Bills, right? It could have been him. I, I don't think it was him. I do know who the unsung hero and probably who the MVP of the last Chiefs Super Bowl win should have been. I think it should have been Damian Williams, if I recall correctly, and I'm going to look it up to see. He broke off. He broke that big run at the end of the game. For the touchdown. I think he had, what did he have, three touchdowns in that game? Damian Williams had 17 for 104 and a rushing touchdown. He had four for 29 and a receiving touchdown. Mahomes' numbers were pretty modest. Mm-hmm. He was 26 for 42, 286, two TDs, but two picks. He was sacked four times. Um, he did have a rushing touchdown. And I mean, look, and again, like, it's hard. I mean, you know, because you're a Colts fan, Peyton Manning should not have been the MVP of that Super Bowl. You know who it should have been? 
No, six. Dominic Rhodes. Sounds well, familiar. Well, he, so he was the uh, first. Kelvin Benjamin. Day. That's who I'm thinking Kelvin of. Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin. Okay. He got fat, but he was in Caroline, I think, at the time. <laughs> I yeah yeah. I think it's hilarious when that is because David Ortiz. That was a big thing. Every spring training, he would show up and they would say, "Oh my God, he's fat." Like the, nice. he's he gained so much weight over the off season. I was like, it's Big Poppy. That's his name. Yes, yeah, right. And then eventually he sheds the weight. The only one that didn't that was an issue was Pablo Sandoval. Pablo, yep. Yeah. I will. Fifteen or sixteen, I don't know. That was they signed him in. Signed fifteen. 15. Yeah, I don't remember if he even. That was the same year Carl Crawford got signed. That was the same year Hanley Ramirez also got signed. It wasn't Carl Crawford? Hanley Ramirez. Yes. When did? Oh, no, Crawford Carl Crawford was, was 2011, 2011. That was that, yeah, fried chicken and beer Red Sox team. That was my nightmare team. That was my favorite because the Orioles, well, that of course. started there like, you know, because then five years in a row after that, they were good. Yeah. Like the curse of the Andino, but just. Except for 13. We, you know, yeah, that was worst to, worst to first yeah. to worst. I know, I, had, I got a bumper sticker at Fenway in 2014. They were giving them out. It said worst to first to worst. Because 12, they were the worst. 13, yeah. they won it all. 14, they went back in the last 13. Season. That team was also expected to be really bad, which we don't, we don't talk too much baseball. Yeah. Baseball is coming. I want to tell, well, I promise that. Let's bookmark 2013 Red Sox because I have some stories about that. But um, Peyton Manning, like, let's say this whole MVP thing, because Rhodes was 21 for 113 and a mm -hmm. touchdown in that game. Manning was like 25 for 38, 247, a TD and a pick, whatever. But I don't know. I mean, if you look at the Super Bowl MVPs, the last time we had a defensive player, was you know this Von like, Miller, yeah, right? Von Miller, and before that, Malcolm Smith, and before that, it only happened two other times in the 2000s, which were the obviously the Ra yeah. I say obviously the Ravens and the Bucks because they were the Ray Lewis and the yeah. Dex Dexter Jackson, which is funny because I think they put the votes in for Dexter Jackson because he had the two picks earlier, yeah. but Dwight Smith had two pick sixes in that game in a Super Bowl, oh, he didn't win MVP, but the, like the last one was with two seconds left. Um, so I have like, well, it wasn't as important. But. I have a number. This is crazy. That yeah. This is even in this. That this is even in Vegas to bet on the odds that Travis Kelsey will propose to Taylor Swift yeah, at the Super Bowl. That's a that's a pretty reasonable what, one. What are the odds? What do you do? You know what the odds are? Uh, they're probably like two to one. One in. To, this is what it says. One in one. The I thought it odds was like plus two hundred or something. Will he propose? The odds that Travis Kelsey will one. propose to Taylor Swift. I ain't gonna do it if they lose, right? I feel so like already they already have to factor that in. I feel like it is a low shot. I can't like the. I can't imagine he would do it at the Super Bowl. I feel like that's something they don't do in the NFL. When was the last time you remember a guy did, proposing on the field? Did, um, the Rams, uh, Taylor Rapp, I want to say. I don't know if it was the Super Bowl or if it was the NFC Championship, maybe. I think I'm that was the sure. NFC title. Okay, maybe it was because they were both in that same stadium. Like, it happens in, in baseball, Carl. He's still going to probably be good in five years because small body is not going to break down. It's expensive um, to bang those trash cans and wear the wires, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> last running back to win Super Bowl MVP, you know? Well, let me think about that. I feel like it was just one of those Patriots teams. No, no. It hasn't happened this century. This century. It hasn't happened. This um century. was it was it Emmett Smith? A little more recent. A little more recent. Yeah. Um, Emmett Smith was yeah, he was one time he won MVP. Ninety three. Alright, you tell me. It was Terrell Davis. Oh, I wouldn't have known that one. No, <laughs> and Terrell Davis, that was the Super Bowl when Denver upset Green Bay for its first. Elway's that was first. Elway's first. Yeah. yeah. Um and, and Davis had migraines and he had to he was like a decoy on one play. Um, just remember that El Elway, the Elway helicopter. They show that clip so much on NFL films. He runs for that. It reminds me of the Rosencopter. The Rosencopter game. You ever heard of that? No. I think it was Houston and Tennessee. They were playing. It was like, I think it was a meaningless game. And the quarterback, um, Rosenfield, something Rosenfield. Sage Rosenfeld. Sage Rosenfeld. Oh, yeah. Like ran for a first down for like no reason. There was yeah. like no reason for him to do it, and he ended up he get, ended up like helicoptering. I think he fumbled, and like they lost the game. It was maybe it was meaningful to Houston no, it was somehow. Against the Colts. Okay. Oh, maybe it was against the Colts. Man, Gary Brackett was good. I don't know if that play stood. There's a flag. I, I now I'm tempted to see if it if it counted or not. But anyway, maybe uh, it was meaningful to the Colts. Well, it was. I we I mean, it was. Yeah, it was early in the season. Sage Rosenfeld tries to pull a John Elway. Uh, real quick before we go into the game, what's your what's your favorite? Okay, for 
besides the Colts and Ravens for us, favorite Super Bowl you've ever watched? Best game or just I mean like what I really hate to say it, but the twenty eight to three. That's yeah, just so. that is like I hate to see the Patriots I when I hate that it was the Patriots. That. But like just I, everything about that. You know, they go and, and the literally that picture is now a meme of, of them getting the shot of Brady sitting here like this. Like he just has his head down. You can see his name played on the back because he's yeah. just so bent over. Right. That was right before the comeback started. Now it's a meme. It's like, you know, anytime like anyone like, you know, they're trying to hit on a girl and like they're sitting at the bar like that, like just like preparing themselves to go right. talk to the girl. Right. Like so much. And then and then um what was it? Damien was it Damien Harris that scored the touchdown? Yeah. Damien for 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 the Patriots to the win end of the game. game. Yeah. Oh, uh, it was James White. James White, maybe yeah. Dion Lewis maybe. Dion Lewis, yeah. It was yeah. James White that had the massive I mean, they're speaking of guys that could have been MVP, obviously you're not gonna not give it to Brady. Yeah. But White had an insane game, like fifteen catches. Yeah. But the Edelman catch. Oh my god, yeah. I mean I also like I mean, I could say I don't know, Super Bowl 50, like, to see Manning was cool, but yeah. that wasn't... That wasn't a good game, really. I, I think we misremember that game, I will say. Because if I when I rewatch it, I go through and I'll rewatch wow. some of the old games, yeah. and that game was really close most of the way until, I think it was until Cam refused to dive for the ball. Right. I want to say that was the moment. Yeah, that was probably... But that game wasn't exactly out of reach. The, what's it, um... The Seahawks Patriots. I mean, especially that catch down the sideline. Nobody talks about that gold, Golden Tate. I oh, say it was, was the one Tate. where it was like tipped up in yeah. the air. And that crazy, that's yeah. that's how the Seahawks got down there. Right. I think that was Malcolm Butler who tipped it up. Yeah. And, it, you know, a nobody, of it. nobody talks about it. Now. And I remember saying, yeah. I remember saying, like, when that happened, I was like, if the Seahawks, like, they find a way to win this game, that might be the greatest catch in Super Bowl. Yeah, it? that'll be the one they. Like, that would be, that would be more than. Then, um, what's his name uh, for the Giants? Uh, Tyree. Yeah, Manning David Manning Tyree. I was thinking of Manningham. Both were Manningham, good. great catch, too. I think Manningham was more just also a great throw. Whereas yeah. the Tyree one was just, he kind of just heaved it up. He had to. He just had to right. get it out of there. Right. Manningham, he threw it right in the bucket. Oh, that was... And the toe tap was fucking awesome. But, I mean, 28-3, to three, just... 28-3. to three. What I'm trying to think. I mean, the, the Eagles-Patriots Super Bowl was cool. That was sure. a fun. That was a fun one to watch yeah. and high scoring, but last year everyone was talking about how great of a game it was. I mean, it was a good game, good game, yeah. But it just didn't have it for me. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it was the color well, matchup. It, when to me, when one like the twenty to three doesn't. I, it was a great game, but like when you have two halves that are just both dominated by a team, you want a game that is. So it yeah. has a lot of back and forth as opposed to just one team dominates and then the other team just dominates. That yeah. kind of is what it felt like last year. By the way, greatest officiating call in history because there's been bad ones. Um, Mike Carey not calling Eli Manning in the grasp. Oh, the in that Thomas Super Bowl, yeah. He spun out, he threw it. It led to the greatest play, yeah. one of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history. Um, all right, I'll summarize mine real quick. Uh, favorite non-Ravens. Both times the Patriots lost, probably. Well, and the Chiefs <laughs> losing, too. I, I just love seeing when these dynasty teams go down. Uh, of course, it was Brady beating the Chiefs in that one. But, yeah, I mean, how can when, you know, beating the undefeated team was pretty amazing. But the be the first one I watched start to finish, it was probably my favorite one just because I was nostalgic for it, was the Titans and the Rams. It ended on the one-yard line. Oh, and it was I I can't even you remember, don't remember that. But the Rams led 16-0. The Titans were doing nothing all game. And then yeah. Steve McNair just came into his own there. And then you had Isaac Bruce caught the long touchdown. And then, I mean, game ended on the one yard. I mean, as, as a Colts fan, it would be hilarious to, to watch the Titans Well, that's the only like time that. the Titans have been there. Well, that's that's the argument. Anytime an, an AFC South team wants to, like, shit on you, you just say, Titans, none. Where Jaguars, no, no Super Bowls. Texans, no appearances. No, no AFC title game appearances. I know. Like, that's so, so the, sad. Colts have... Yeah, I mean the Colts, Colts have, have won four, two. Right? They've been to four. They the other three teams combined have been to one. Yeah, <laughs> and the Colts yeah. have been to a ton of AFC title games. Like, yeah, I could probably I can't even count right now. Oh, I think I think the '99 season is why I fell in love with football. It was the year before the Ravens won. Actually, Ray Lewis at that Super Bowl is where he got into the whole you know legal mess or whatever. But it was Kurt Warner's rags to riches story was that yeah. year. And I just was like, this is so cool. This is what football is. These great yeah. stories. And then the Ravens won the Super Bowl the next year. I'm like, I love this. And fast forward 20 years later, I'm like, oh, now it's Brady and Mahomes every yeah. freaking year. 
Um, that was a great game, but I think the best one I watched, even though I didn't like the result, it was actually a Patriots one, but I think it was Patriots in Carolina. Because I was so, again, in love with these underdog stories. Love Jake DeLome and those 03 yeah. Cardiac Cats. That game was fantastic. It was scoreless for uh, about 25 minutes, mm -hmm. and then 14-10, 24 points in the last five minutes of the first half, then scoreless in the oh, third. Oh, so they exploded. And then both teams exploded again in the fourth. New England was up 11. Carolina came back, took the lead. New England went ahead. Carolina tied it. Mm -hmm. um, and then Vinatieri kicks the field goal. Kicker yeah. kicked it out of bounds. Right, Casey kicked it out of bounds. Um, so those are the ones that stand out. The one, I guess, well, and I mean, there's really not much to talk about, I think, before the Super Bowl. It's a lot more. You talk more Super Bowl history and I know and numbers before so the Super Bowl. That's what makes the game great is the yeah. history of the game. I also think I'll say this: the Super Bowl doesn't have like during the game it doesn't have the juice to me compared like and and all the lead up right. I think I think it's because of all the lead up yeah. and all the hype. It's oh my god, the Super Bowl's here, the Super Bowl's here, and then we're in the game and teams. They, it doesn't feel like the Super Bowl. Like, the AFC the AFC and NFC title games feel like the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. That's what it should feel like. And that's why I hate the neutral field. Right. I despise the neutral field. Yeah, yeah. The only time I'll accept a neutral field is if it's in the state of, like, the team. Which, obviously, you can't do that. That's impossible to well, do. Well, when the Chargers played the 49ers, they should have played it in California somewhere. Yeah. Maybe yeah. somewhere in the middle. They need to do the Rose Bowl more. I think they needed. The they do, yeah. And well, they, the Coliseum. They played in the uh, in the Rose Bowl uh, a few times. They played uh, probably. I think most recently. One of my favorite Su Bills. One of my favorite Super Bowl logos is the rose. The rose from that's the, Dallas Buffalo. Yeah, I think. yeah. The that is probably maybe like my top three. Don't even get me started. I'm I'm, I'm gonna do a video on it well, for Instagram. <laughs> this whole week is you know the Pro Bowl. I just I loved the days when it was after the season and in Hawaii and it was a regular game mm -hmm. and they played hard. I mean they didn't play that hard, but they played. There was some pride. It started to gradually wane. Yeah, over time. But yeah, but how about the game? I mean, who? So we we'll there's I think our predictions, but like. There's the obvious players, I think, that everyone's going to talk about. Well, let's talk about some of the non-obvious, I guess, impact guys. The receivers, obviously, are for the Chiefs, not yeah. named Travis Kelsey or Rashid Rice. Right. Those two are, are, I think, the whole core in general. They can get something going. I think if MVS can, can really be an impact deep, that's going to be big. Because the 49ers are going to find a way to get rid of Kelsey for at least half the game. Yeah. Right? I mean, I feel Maybe. like that's pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. They have, Are they the ones that have sucked against tight ends, or was that Detroit? I think anybody, Detroit anybody sucked who's playing against the Chiefs has sucked against tight ends. That's true. That, um, that is true. But um, Rashid Rice is sort of finding his footing at times. I, I would say he really is starting to find his footing. I hope I hope he can show out, but I think just that, that, that uh, sporting catch. Like, is Tony even – playing this week if they made up a fake injury he might not be right that's uh you know hold on let's see status here um yeah it's still unknown so i'm not really sure what what he's gonna do um he also said he never attacked the chiefs in his recent profane rant that's just the headline i saw mm. um but Getting Pacheco, I think, involved in the pass game is going to be important. Yeah. That's going to be big. Receiving a receiver running back. You know what I'm trying to say. Pass yeah, they're, they're saying he has a very real chance. Oh, and this, I, I don't mean to take you off that, but also Patrick Mahomes' dad got a DWI. I did. Week. Yes, I, of course. That but I'm so could old that I be remember something. him pitching. Well, last year, so again, here's fun Super Bowls. They had the last four times I can remember that there was a legit distraction that team lost. Uh, last year, I don't know if you remember because he's a small name player, but Josh Sills charges that's mm -hmm. some serious stuff. Eagles lost that game. Britt Reed, real serious stuff. Yeah. I think did die as a result of that, or seriously injured with the car. It was okay. I don't I, know if it was drunk driving or it was a just negligent, whatever. But that was definitely a distraction. The Chiefs got hammered. The kid, in that game. the kid had major, um, yeah, met, uh, brain damage. Yeah, it was something very like permanent brain damage. Very serious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that. Uh, Barrett Robbins, Raiders went on a bender in Tijuana, disappeared, oh, completely yeah. disappeared. Mm -hmm. He was one of their, he was their starting center, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
talk about distraction. Your starting center goes missing the night before the Super Bowl. Yeah. Raiders get destroyed by 27 points. Well, it's not that funny. It's funnier than the other stories. Eugene Robinson solicits an undercover cop thinking it's a prostitute in, in Miami the night before the right, it was the night. They can't have the suit. This is this, this is the same Super Bowl thing. Miami. Uh, you can't have it in Miami, New Vegas, New Orleans. Yeah. They need to learn to not do that because the NFL already said they, they issued a statement saying players cannot gamble before the Super Bowl. They can gamble after the Super Bowl, but they cannot gamble before. Right. And needless <laughs> to say, that was an embarrassment. The Falcons then got embarrassed. Stanley Wilson, running back for the Bengals, the 88 Super Bowl, uh, relapsed into cocaine usage on the eve of the game when the Bengals were about to play the 49ers, and uh, Bengals lost that one. So, I don't know, I'm sure you could find some odd one somewhere, like yeah. something happened. But it's interesting that Yes, this, I don't know. I don't know if this will be a distraction. If anything, does it distract the team? Does it maybe distract Mahomes a little bit? You know, I don't know. Is the media just peppering him with questions about his dad? I I, didn't see I really that. haven't seen anything about it. It's kind of sensitive too, right? You're going to be like, oh, so your dad's got his third DWI. How do you feel about that? I don't know if that's a That's a tough one to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it was David Letterman, he'd probably ask him, but, you know, somebody yeah. with a lot of gall. Um, <laughs> but, uh yeah, um, so that's interesting that you brought that up. Where were we? We were talking about... Oh, uh, uh, we were Kenny, talking about right? the Chiefs passing. Passing, methods. yeah. Well, using running backs in the yeah. passing game. Um, I have to. I had to do a double take here because as good as the um, as good as the Chiefs defense has been all year, I want to. I, I make sure I'm reading this correctly. As a team, they only had. Let me just do some quick math. Eight interceptions the whole year. Is that right? Really. I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, you know, and the defense had eight interceptions. The, as a whole, the defense um, got. Let me see. Yeah, eight interceptions a whole year. The Chiefs were negative eleven in turnovers this year. They were right at near the bottom of the league, and we thought that was a big deal because the Ravens led the NFL, tied with the yeah. Giants, plus twelve. But Chiefs that's, were minus, but that's still Mahomes, right? That's, that's the the, the Brady mind, Mahomes, and and I think mind game, yeah. I I'm I don't know, but I think this is kind of the same thing with his dad as well, where it's like, oh, we, we got him, we finally got Mahomes. You know, we there's something to distract him, right? Right, right? We finally got him, and I mean, we don't know, but this is what we do. <laughs> this is what we do every year. So I just I always like to just make sure that's in the listener's mind of like we're aware of yeah. what's going on. Like I always because every you know everyone's gonna be like, oh, you got it wrong. You know, Mahomes, Mahomes, Mahomes can't. Mahomes isn't. You know, he's impenetrable. You guys like thought he was penetrable. No, we know. We know. The only the only thing that could stop Mahomes is if Gronkowski comes out of retirement because Gronkowski was retired in nineteen. Chiefs won the Super Bowl. He comes back for two years, and him, <laughs> retires again, and now they're gonna win back to back. That was. Uh, um, and then, because we're starting to get on time, we probably got to wrap okay. up yeah. soon. Um, so much fun talking about history, man. I, I know. Just could do that all night. Yeah. I want to talk about Jake Moody. Yes. That's yes. a... I mentioned Robbie Gold earlier. I was mm -hmm. joking, right? He has been... I mean, his misses are bad, and his mm -hmm. makes are almost worse, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, Rookie kicker, right? And, I mean, everyone... Everyone says kickers aren't important. Special teams aren't important. You could talk to the Chiefs about special teams as well. Because last, I think last year, Butker struggled. I mean, they won. He struggled in the He in struggled the in the, season, in the maybe, early part of the season. Yeah, I don't know if he did so much in the postseason, but he hit the game winner against six. Either way, yeah. special teams matters a lot more than I think a lot of oh, casual well, yeah. I mean, fans Tony would say. Tony had a punt return last yeah. year to set up a touchdown, yeah. And Jake Moody is, I mean, he could be a problem. He's... And he's three of five um, on field goals, and he's one of three between 40 to 49 yards, mm. which is, I mean, in the NFL, you got to make your 40 to 49 yards. Those are yeah. those are game breakers. Right? Oh, yeah. They're indoors. There's no elements. I mean, when they lost to Cleveland, he missed. Well, they're, the they're already complaining about the, the practice, the field. UNLV practice field. Just. Just go to San Francisco. <laughs> I, last year, remember how bad the footing was? And it seemed like it was only the Eagles who were slipping on that field. It was weird. Maybe it was, was a uh, conspiracy theory. What's it called? Something gate. They, they were calling it turf gate. Oh, turf gate. Turf gate. Turf gate. Because, you know, I mean, we're doing the same thing with the Patriots. You know? Yeah. I believe we're, some teams have gone to the Super Bowl with rookie quarterbacks. Justin Tucker, when the Niners lost to the Ravens, was a rookie. Uh, Jake Elliott. 
did well for the Eagles as a rookie. McPherson was with the Bengals, mm-hmm. and and they had a trustworthy kicker in him. Um, still do. Yeah, the, the Moody thing is um, that's an interesting point. And uh, you know, I mean, the way that these teams play, the, the 49ers have won two games by three points in the postseason, and Moody missed in both. Right? He had a miss against Green Bay. I think. He yes, he did miss one against Green Bay, Detroit. Yeah, he missed one early. Yeah, early yeah. against Detroit because I my my Lions fan was he was literally doing the push to the right yeah, and yeah. he actually missed it to the right. To the right. So we were like, no fucking way, no shot. He got that. You know, but kickers like so I mentioned that Carolina New England Super Bowl. Vinatieri missed two short field goals early in that game. Does anyone remember that? No, no. they remember the game winner from forty one yards out yeah. with four seconds left. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, I mean, one was blocked. But the point is, Moody. They've been lucky. They haven't been in crunch time. Um, but, yeah, there's – look, there's there's always concern, right, that the game's going to come down to the foot of a kicker. Yeah. Best lesson is don't let that happen, and don't let the officials have an impact on the game. Try to win by more, try to win by more than three. I mean, you're, that, that's funny, but, like, you're right. Yeah, like, well, I mean, that's with, just – That's just the constant complaining, and that's my point. And yeah. people are like, oh, they're – you know, the other team is trying hard, too. Like, I get it, but you made mistakes in the second quarter yeah. that left points on the board. Like, well, those points would be there right now. Like, right. obviously, we don't know how things would shake out if, you know, maybe they kick a field, they make the field goal instead, and then, you know, maybe somebody catches the ball instead of drops it. We don't know, but we know the points that were left on the board, and you're complaining about the refs. Right. Your team made a mistake. Yeah. I, you don't want to come back. And look, this, you know, you say, well, it's always the Chiefs that get away with it. Always the Patriots. Well, they're good teams. And, you know, in tennis, there's the there's the expression is unforced errors, right? So yeah. Unforced errors versus the other team forces you to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You cannot have unforced. The Ravens had a lot of unforced errors. Yeah. Even the Flowers fumble was an error. Even though Snead made the great play, that never should have. Ha- I mean, you never should be extending the ball. Do you have any other stats? Because then we'll go into oh, picks and we, we do have to wrap up. Picks. Pretty yeah, soon. I, I don't want to make any Taylor Swift predictions. Um Although, imagine if you were, like, her relative and you knew what color dress she was going to wear and you could just bet on it. Like, hey, Taylor, what are you wearing? I'm wearing red. All right. <laughs> that was three to one. I'll put, you know, Gatorade colors. That's a fun. Let's do it. I'll yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually I'm taking down a bunch of these here. Um, we did them. We also did them on Monday, but they weren't my serious, serious ones. First teams in score, obviously. First, first team to score? You no, know? I mean, uh, teams, who's going to win and what will the score be? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm going to throw out blue as the Gatorade color. I don't know why you got to pick for that. I said orange. Yeah. I was, week, and I was, orange. I was yeah. feeling orange. I, I feel like we haven't had I don't know what it's been. Orange. I'm sure someone has tracked, you know, Gatorade color history Super Bowl. Right? Plus, they're both red. And I feel like when... orange is the most popular. The new well, that's that's the that's the original. Oh, no. Sorry. Uh, was OK. So it says. Oh, since 2001, orange is, is the most popular. But since 2015, blue has been the most frequent. There you go. And 2001, since 2001, it's never been red. And purple and yellow have only appeared three times. Yeah. Who Who's going to win the coin toss and what hedge and tips? why? why? No. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, we know the 40, we know both of these teams are deferring. So whoever wins oh, yeah. the coin toss is not getting the ball to start. Yeah. Um, tails never fails. So always, ta- I don't, why, nobody ever picks, they always pick heads. I know it infuriates me. I mean, I'm uh, saying tips. I'm going to say that the Chiefs win the toss. Somehow the 49ers screw up and the Chiefs get it both halves. Man, the Chiefs. I'm going to say the nine. Wait, who's who's picking? Oh, so the right. So this is an odd numbered season. So the a- NFC is the road team. So the Chiefs are. I'm sorry. So the NFC chooses the visitor chooses, right? So the yeah. Niners make the call. So, so I'm going to go with the Chiefs as well. They're right. The Forty Niners will call heads. We'll I'll yell at the TV. I'll say tails never fails, and whoever's out there probably not Mahomes. I don't know who yeah. is that. Kelsey's probably one of the captains. Uh, I feel like it's a defensive player. Maybe Chris Snead. Jones, maybe yeah. Chris Jones. Good. Um, what about Usher? Usher. Uh, what is this? Here we go. A will he do a Taylor Swift song? Was one of the uh, I saw that was one. it cover a song. That was one I saw somewhere. Yeah, you know the offshore books actually have most of the weirdest. Odds. Yeah, the the legal ones it gets a little muddy. I was reading do some, and then there's some legality issues in certain states, that were like New York. And- oh, here we go. Will Will Alicia Keys 
or Ludacris appear. Definitely one of them. I don't know which one. I, I, I mean, I like them both, but I hope Ludacris just gives a nostalgic for, you know. He, I wonder if he's ever, I'm sure he's done a Super Bowl. Well, he just also did a commercial for Jif Peanut Butter. I haven't seen Alicia Keys uh, in a while. So I'm going to say Alicia Keys to Zig because I haven't seen her right. that much in, like, media lately. Yeah. Um, what about Reba McIntyre's, um, what's it called? National Anthem. I don't know how I forgot about it. Oh, and how long will it be? Again, I yeah. got to look at like the... Hold on. I got to take the mean of all the previous... They're saying 89 and a half seconds is the line. Right now. So that's probably what the standard is. She'll, she probably, because she's older and wants to leave a lasting impact, she'll probably hit a... I'm going to say... Well, um, what about... Is there anything else? I didn't see anything else. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of other options we can do. Um, we'll just say score, and then that'll also go for the total score of, like, over-under. Oh, yeah. Well, what is the over-under? I've had a predetermined score because I picked Chiefs and the Niners before the year. Not necessarily on your show, but I had it. Wrote it all down. I had the Niners beating the Lions in the NFC Championship game. <laughs> uh, really great call. I had the Chiefs beating the New York Jets in the AFC Championship game. Uh, and then I had the Chiefs and 49ers, and I have a score picked out. And so I'm not going to waver from that. I'm trying to find the um, point spread latest odds. Here we go. Okay. I'm seeing right here. Nope. Still can't find anything. I don't know. 47 and a half. I think it's going to hit. He doesn't go over. Yeah. Well, uh, let, let's see, since you, you're starting, give me the uh, give me the final score. Oh boy, I think it's going to be a little bit more of an offensive game. Think so. Yeah, because I'm seeing like Madden predicted like 16 to six or something like that at half or no final score, and I was like, that sucks. That's not happening. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm going Chiefs. I'm gonna go 31-28. Okay. I feel like a, a Niners, like, last couple minute, like, drive, score, and then try and get it back. Oh, I see. So They're going to try and 10. do that. Yeah. Um, so, if it's 47 and a half, I told you I had a predetermined score from before the season. I don't mm -hmm. want to waver from that. Because I did it last year, and it cost me. So, I'm saying, first of all, one guarantee, in my opinion, is that the 49ers won't score more than 27. Because the Chiefs have gone 20 games this year and not given up. 27. But oh, it definitely won't be 30. How about that? 49ers won't get to 30. Yeah. Um, if they do, I'm happy to eat my words, even if even if the Chiefs still win. I am going to go with the Chiefs. I think there's too many similarities to this Chiefs team. And I always felt like whatever year Tom Brady finally retired would be the year somebody could finally win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Because Brady kept it from happening against the Seahawks. He kept it from happening against the Chiefs. Now he's out of the picture the for good. Colts too. Well, I mean, early in the Super Bowl. Yeah, being what happened in the 07 season. I want to uh, say that Colts team was pretty good. They were, but they lost to the Chargers in the playoffs. They oh, you know, the oh okay. I was I'm thinking getting team that has a chance to repeat as a champion, and Brady was the reason they didn't. So he did it to yeah. Seattle. He did it to Kansas. No, State. I'm saying I thought he beat the Colts in 2007. And like the AFC title game. Oh no, he should have. That was but the Chargers got in the way and then went to New England with them. That was the down LT and Philip Rivers and Gates. And then he were tore his in. ACL, yep, right? And, and they were still played. Yeah. Um, so I do think I, I think the Chiefs have all the intangibles. Will this be? Could this potentially be Andy Reid's last game? Could it potentially be Travis Kelsey's last game? Probably not. I don't think we're that lucky. I just think the Chiefs' defense and run game is going to be what wins it for him because that's as great as Mahomes is and as much as we can sit here and talk about how teams are shaking in their boots. It's been their defense and run game as much as anything this year. So I am going by a hair, by the skin of the, their teeth, they go under 27-20 Chiefs. Um, a lot of people that was really scores mad. before the season. Well, I mean, look, 47 <laughs> points in a it's better than 13-3 in a Super Bowl. I know it's not 38-35. We had a 23 to 20 game, and that was a great game. The Bengals yeah. and the Rams was was a classic. We had a 31 to 9 game that was not a classic. So points don't always equate to a great game. Yeah. I don't even know if 27-20 is going to be that great of a game. I think the Chiefs are going to try to make this ugly like they did last week. Yeah. They're going to try to win ugly. They're going to try to set the tone early. And then they're and, I, and I'm gonna 
Mahomes is so easy to pick as the MVP. Mm-hmm. When Brady won MVP his first two times, and then he let someone else do it, and then he did the same <laughs> thing. He won two more, and then he let a receiver do it. Yeah. So it's Branch and Edelman. Why not Pacheco for MVP? Why there not? You know, first rely, running back and first running. Yeah, that's why I know that you just reminded me. It's been so damn long. It's been a quarter of a century. But it's due. It is due. It could be Kelsey. And the Niners and have struggled with their run game. It was stopping the run game. They right. have. And once they get past that first level, they've had a hard time tackling. Mm-hmm. And, and Pacheco's, Pacheco's a guy that, game. yeah. He's going to have a big game, whether or not the voters give him the award, just like they didn't give Dominic Rhodes the award, just like they didn't give it to James White. Sometimes they just... Pacheco's also been a sexy. really good story, I think, too. Seven a brown, lot of people right? know his, and his. I think he lost his mom and his sister. Oh. And his brother within like a very short amount of time. Wow. So I think that's a really good story. People are going to love it. And he's very quiet. Nobody yes. really hates him. And a seventh round draft pick. Yeah. Just like not Mr. Relevant, but like Brock yeah. Purdy. So, so I think um, I think he has a good shot. I think that's a good pick. Hey, Julian Edelman. He was a seventh round pick. That's him. true. He was MVP. non Last non-quarterback with MVP was Edelman. So why not? So let's give it to, let's give it to Pacheco. Do I? I'm, I guess I have to pick my MVP and then we'll get out of here. Do I want to? Do I want to do the Jerry West and give it to a loser? Happened once in Super Bowl history. There's no way you would. Yeah, I don't think that's happened. Yes, it, um, it happened actually against the Colts. Funny enough, in Super Bowl five, Chuck Howley was the uh, linebacker for the Cowboys, even though they lost. I'm gonna say, I feel like the voters are gonna not try it. They don't want to give it to. Mahomes. Um, they don't want to give it to Mahomes because they're already getting sick and tired of the Mahomes right. thing. Although Brady won it a lot, but. I'm going to say Rasheed Rice. Well, it usually when it's not a – and it's an offensive guy who's not a quarterback, it's always yeah. a receiver now. So that, that stands to reason. I mean, look, has a tight end ever won it? The answer, no. Tight end has never won Super Bowl MVP. I think, I think Kelsey's going to have a important position. He's going to make some key plays. He's going to make yeah. key plays, but I feel like statistically he might not have a big one. Right. Like a big game. Like he's not going to go for 110 and and two touchdowns. He'll he'll have a modest game, but those modest yards are going to come on like key third downs late in the game cuz uh, they right. go to him all the time. Like a like a shovel pass or something. And then maybe he'll yeah. take it for like four, but it's like, "Oh, like the Chiefs really, you know, maybe they were down point. four yeah. and they needed the a, a propeller to right. start their drive and that was it. It was like, "Okay. Now we go." Yeah. Type of thing. But he's getting married after the game anyway. <laughs> he, wants to, he doesn't need all the accolades during the game. It's true. I'm, I'm going to find that prop bet. Maybe, maybe throw a little bit of money on that. You never know. Why not? All right. Well, um, thank you all for watching. Have a great Super Bowl. This is the last Thursday when this drops of the NFL season. The last Thursday oh. we have of the 2023-2024 NFL season. But I'm already ready for the next game. But obviously baseball is if Only first. there was a Pro Bowl that we could talk about. I know, right? Preview. Um, but make sure to go to YouTube, check out the brand new trailer for the Chaotic Clean Tolerant Table Tennis League. Um, obviously we announced it last week on the show, but I figured that was a much more of a hard launch. Um, but it's very exciting and, uh, we will see you next week. Enjoy. All right.